Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to ProLine, the NFL version. It is week six of the NFL. I'm John Cranton in Las Vegas, joined by Jeff Sott of Las Vegas Sports Services, as well as world champion handicapper Jim Feist. Got a couple of NFL games to talk about. Got our Twitter question of the week. But first, a couple of these guys here have had monster runs. Jim, we're going to start with you. 46-26 and one football run the last month. You've been tearing it up with totals 18 and nine. You got a big special going this weekend. How can everybody get aboard a Vegas Pro? Well, for 21 bucks, it's that easy. 21 dollars, you get the rest of October. That includes the Major League Baseball playoffs, two college conference or two. Co- college games of the month going Saturday, including the rivalry game of the month, that's early Saturday, and my NFL total of the month on Sunday. You just call 1-866-841-1655. As John said, I have been red hot. Naturally, every once in a while we stub our toe, but we've been red hot since the beginning of August. We can we expect to continue that right through the season, uh, and we're working real hard to do that. So you make the call, 1-866-841-1655. We will deliver the winners. We've got the rest of October for $21, and that includes some big plays. And Jeff Sott of Las Vegas Sports Service, and another winning NFL Sunday in your college football has been on a roll the last three weeks combined, 15-5-1 and one against the spread. You've been tearing it up, and you've got some more big games going this weekend. Yeah, John, last week I advertised three games in this show, and all three of them won. I had my uh, Big 12 game of the year of the month with Baylor, ACC game of the month with Clemson, and then on Sunday my NFL Shocker of the Year won with the Arizona Cardinals. 15-5-1 in, in college football. Uh, I won my blockbuster last last week with the Ravens. Third week in a row I won my NFL blockbuster. That's the highest rated play that I have. Everything's going great here at LVSS. This week I have two more conference games a month on Saturday, plus my NFL Road Warrior game of the year on Sunday. You get all three for only $19 called LVSS at 1-866-575-8916, 1-866-575-8916. All right, we've got a couple of games. Look at the Packers-Ravens and then the big game Saints-Patriots. But first, our Twitter question of the week. This is how you out there can get involved. You can Twitter us at Twitter at Jim Fice Sports or go to Facebook at ProLine TV. Uh, this question comes from Cal Johnson of Springville, Maine. Has there ever been a higher betting number than the Broncos-Jags game coming up this weekend. And we did a little research, found the Tampa Bay Buccaneers back when they were an expansion team in 1976 were a 24-point dog at Pittsburgh. They lost 42 to nothing. And then going back to 1966, there was a 24-point line with the expansion of the Falcons against the Colts. What was unusual is they actually led at the half 7-6 to six, before losing at 19-7. to seven. So, uh, Jim, is this the highest line you've seen in some time? Well, I, I don't, I don't remember any line being higher than this, in my memory anyway. So, and I guess I didn't bother going back through record books or anything, but I do know that when you look at a game like this, you have to say to yourself, you know, it's a long season. It's all about whether the Broncos want to beat this team by a lot of points. So that's, that's the question. Why would they want to? They just came off a very tough game against Dallas and they were pushed to the limit in that game and, and honestly, they were kind of lucky to win it because Dallas, without that turnover at the end, Dallas might have ran or got down the field, kicked the field goal, and won the game. So I think I think they come home and there's a breather here. For as far as I'm concerned, Denver should take a breather here. Should get a lead first half, pull the players a little bit, give them a little bit of a rest because they got a long season in front of them. That's what I would do as a head coach. And, you know, I don't know if you can get Peyton Manning off the field. He just loves to play football. Even if he's up 50 to nothing, he's probably going to be throwing touchdowns. But I think the, the coaching staff will probably hold them back a little bit. And uh, I think the possibility the Jags cover this number. Well, Jeff, I heard a rumor that you're looking at Jacksonville on the money line at plus 800,000. Is that uh, correct? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you still probably won't have any takers. Uh, this is a... a for, for, for to lay 27 points, wherever it is, at, at, in this situation, I don't see any way you can really put money in this game. They, they're coming off, as Jim said, that big game 
emotional win over Dallas. They have a coach next week, next week with the Manning's former team. Why would you want to lay this kind of points, this situation? Uh, it's just a great game to lay off of, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I, I know those other two big point spreads back in the 70s, the, those involved expansion teams. This is this Jacksonville's an established team, and they're still getting this, these kind of points. It's actually it's, it's, it's embarrassing. So uh, it's just kind of game that you just want just to good game to lay off of. I want to I want to go near this game, John. Yeah, and the more recent game was the 2007 Patriots had a couple of lines where they were 20-point-plus favorites, and the biggest one was when they played the Eagles in midseason, a 24-point favorite, and uh, they almost lost the game. It was a 31-28 game. They had the backup quarterback, A.J. Feely, going, but Feely played very well, and uh, they almost pulled the upset as a huge dog. So historically, the dogs, when they've been this big a number, have uh, done very well. Okay, guys, let's get to our, our first game. Get the Packers playing at the Ravens on Sunday, a non-conference game. A couple of teams with established veteran quarterbacks who like to throw the football. Uh, Jim, the Packers are the road favorite, and yet they are 0-4 ATS the last four road games. And really, since 1999, the Ravens uh, have been pretty good at home. Uh, they can struggle at times on the road, but they have a very good spread record at home. You know, John, I, those stats and, and things, I know a lot of people follow them. I, I don't look at history as much as a, a lot of folks because, uh, they, quite honestly, the, the, the coaching staffs have changed. The personnel has certainly changed. The circumstances have changed. Now, both these quarterbacks like to throw, throw the ball a lot, and they both have big arms. They can throw the ball downfield. However, they're both trying to develop running games. And if you look at the Ravens last week against Miami, they ran the ball a lot. The Packers are trying to run the ball a lot as well. Why are they doing this? Because offensive lines in the NFL these days are actually pretty weak at protecting against pass rushes. And they're, they're, the quarterbacks are getting sacked a lot. Uh, and what happens then is your quarterback gets hurt and he's no longer there. So... Smart coaching is going to try to develop offensive lines to be able to block for the running game and running backs to get some more yardage, keep the rush down, get get the defenses to sit back on their heels a little bit, protecting the quarterback. It's just not smart to go out there and pass on every down and get your quarterbacks killed, unless maybe you have a mobile quarterback that can avoid a lot of that. But but look, Mac, Michael Vick did that last week. He pulled a hamstring. It wasn't on a hit, but because he's moving around a lot, he did that. It, it, we just lose too many quarterbacks. We lost a couple. One of up the Buffalo lost their starter. Um, they lost one of in, in, um, the Cleveland Browns lost the starter last week, and uh, it just it just too much. So protect your quarterback, develop a running game, and I think both these teams are trying to do that. That doesn't mean they won't throw the ball. I think they just teams are I think are going to get smarter as the seasons get longer with the injuries and everything. And I, I, I this isn't I don't think this is going to be a shootout. The other thing is when you look at De, uh, De, or, uh, Baltimore, the Super Bowl champion, this team has lost a lot of players from last year, offensively and defensively. They're nowhere near the team they were a year ago. So yes. They have a good record at home covering. And I'm not saying I'm on the Packers here. What I'm saying is when you look at history, I throw it out the window in many cases because you go back to 1999, you're talking 14 years. These guys weren't there 14 years ago. The coaching was all different 14 years ago. To me, it means absolutely nothing. So, uh, And then when you look at a team like Baltimore going through the transition that they went through, defensive and offensive players are gone. It's a different team. So I, I don't look at that as seriously as a lot of other guys do. Well, Jeff, Green Bay is 14-5 and five against the spread when they face a team with a winning record. And on the other side of the coin, you have Joe Flacco. I mean, in January and February, he was phenomenal. 11 touchdowns, no picks. And yet this season, five touchdowns and eight interceptions. Who's the real Joe? Yeah, well, Jim said both teams are trying to run more, but the Packers are having much more success. Uh, Joe, I must, the offensive line is, you know, obviously the Ravens having problems there. Joe Flacco last week, five interceptions. It's just, it's not even close to uh, his production of last year. This year, the Ravens are averaging uh, 78 rushing yards per game, 2.8 yards per carry, compared to 4.6 yards per carry last year. They're 22nd in offense. Uh, the Packers averaging 5.3 yards per carry, compared to 3.1, 3.9 last year. Obviously, that makes their own 
Aaron Rodgers even more effective. Uh, defensively, the Packers uh, are allowing away 3.7 yards per carry. So right now, these are two teams that I think uh, are going in different directions. I think the Packers are improving a lot here, especially after that bye week and they went off over Detroit. The Ravens were my blockbuster play last week. They won, but I, I, I was hoping it wouldn't be that close. They, they actually were kind of fortunate to win that game. So uh, right now we have a Packers team that's relatively healthy. Uh, Eddie Lacy and, and Clay Matthews are probable this week. This will be the first good quarterback that Ravens have faced since game one when they faced Peyton Manning. We know what happened that game. So... Um, I'm going to lean toward the Packers this game, John. I think right now this is uh, it's a very low line, one and a half to three, depending on where you are. I'll take the Packers in this game, John. All right, I'm going to take a look at the total. I mean, Green Bay is going to come in with that fourth-rated passing game in the NFL behind Aaron Rodgers. We know what they can do. They've actually had pretty good balance, fifth and rushing the football, too, and they're on a three-and-one run over the total this season. And then the Baltimore Ravens, you guys mentioned offensive line troubles. Their top two backs, Rice and Pierce, are averaging both 2.9 yards per carry. This team cannot run the football. They're going to have to pass. I can see Green Bay getting up like 10 nothing, and uh, Ravens are going to have to pass a lot. Green Bay is 4-0 over the total of the last four road games. Wouldn't be surprised to see a bit of a high-scoring game in this one. All right, our last game we have is the uh, the Saints are playing the Patriots, another non-conference game on Sunday night. you get got the Patriots' small home favorite, total around 49. And, Jim, you got a Saints team that's happy to have Sean Payton back. Drew Brees once again has one of the top offenses in the league. And even the new defensive coordinator, uh, Rob Ryan, has the defense playing better. You think Rob Ryan wants to... Get a win over the Patriots to help his AFC East brother out? <laughs> I don't know if it'll come down to that, but I think he'd like to earn his money just by keeping his job. But both these teams are only giving up 14 points a game on the season. So, uh, you know, last week New England looked pretty pathetic against Cincinnati. Granted, it was their second road game in a row after beating Atlanta on the road. The Saints have been red hot and everything. I mean, they're just... They're just playing very well, Drew Brees. But, again, this is not a running team, 78 yards per game. New England's doing a little bit better on the ground, uh, but both teams defensively are much better than they used to be uh, in, in the past. We never thought about the Saints or the Pats being defensive teams, but they're only really averaging offensively uh, 26 points a game for New England and uh, New Orleans and, and 19 points a game for New England. Uh, they're rather low numbers for these teams, especially the Pats. Uh, Pats get Gronkowski back but a couple of weeks ago. They lost Wilfork, and losing Wilfork is a major loss uh, for this team. That's that's a guy that blocks the middle. He he eats up a lot of space in the middle. It makes it hard to hard to run, and uh, it, that's going to make a big difference going forward. Uh, I think Cincinnati took a little bit of advantage of that. Last week, and I think the Saints will here. Okay, I'm going to look at the. Uh, let, let's take a look at this game, uh, Jeff. You got a Saints team that is just so explosive on offense, but the Patriots have home field, small home favorite. Who has the edge here? I don't see much of this game. That's why I'm going to apply to the total. Uh, you know, last week everybody was saying uh, Drew Brees has never won a Soldier Field. I won four. He's playing on grass. It's He's like, he won't be the same. Look what happens. He's 29 out of 35, uh, 280 yards, two TDs, no interceptions. So we can throw that theory out the door right now. Jimmy Graham had another tremendous game. Uh, Tom Brady had a bad week. It's... It's it's an anomaly. It's not, it doesn't happen very often. The Patriots still have a decent offense, a balanced, 116 yards on the ground, 227 through the air. Uh, the Patriots have gone over 41 in the last 61 games. 40. The Saints are 40, 17 and one to the over, following a spread win. Nine and two over versus winning teams. The long range weather forecast looks good. Uh, there are some trends in this game that favor the Patriots. They're 12 and 1, uh, against the spread, uh, as a dog following a loss. But, uh, I don't want to go against the Patriots for a second straight loss, and I don't want to go against the Saints the way they're playing. They're playing better now than they have since the Super Bowl year. The only edge I see here is the total is 49 and a half. I'm going to take a slight play on the over, John. And keep in mind that teams, uh, coming off the bye week and have uh, unusual incentive where they want to play all out and then they know they got two weeks off and that's the situation that the Saints are in. This will be their game right before the bye week. Love what Rob Ryan has done with this aggressive attacking defense and the Saints are 16 and 6 against the spread following a spread cover and following when they face a team with a winning record 12 and 4 against the spread. One weakness matchup wise I see with the Patriots, not only did they lose Vince Wilfork, which I think is key 
up front to help stuff the run. But they're linebackers, good against the run, but they're not good in pass coverage. And this is a game matchup-wise where the Saints love to spread the field, love to throw to the running backs, and a lot of targets for Breeze to throw to. It's going to be a very difficult nightmare matchup for the Patriot linebackers in pass coverage. So I'm going to side uh, with the underdog Saints here. All right, before we get to our, our best bets, guys, uh, if you want to get free plays from us, uh, from Dave Koken, for instance, all you have to do is text 313131 to Koken. And, Jim, people can get free plays on a text message from you every day as well. Well, I think you meant the text Koken to 313131, yes. 31, which is reverse of that. Um, and if you want to get free plays every day from me, just text WINNER to 313131. 31, 31. So you can get the free plays from Dave and from myself just by doing that. And as far as my best bet is concerned, it's really difficult on the two games that we spoke about, but uh, I think I'm going to go with the Green Bay-Baltimore game over the total. I think this game might get away from somebody here, and, and uh, even though they're trying to run the ball, that could open up a passing game situation. I don't know what Baltimore is going to do with their their uh, weaknesses everywhere, but if Flacco gets buried, it's, it could be a runaway. It could be Green Bay all the way. If he can hold up and and keep the game intact and get their wide receivers free, he could go deep. But I don't see either one of these defenses holding up for a whole game, so I'm going to probably go over that total. Okay, Jim, uh, let's go through the ads, too. I mean, 13-7 and seven, the last two NFL weekends. Uh, you're perfect 5-0 and oh with these dog pound plays in the NFL. You had the Ravens, <laughs> another straight-up winner the other day, 18-9 and nine with NFL totals. Uh, how can people get aboard for the rest of October? Well, just call one eight six six eight four one sixteen fifty five. You're right, John. Uh, it's been a it's been a smooth ride for me. August first till now, it's been we haven't had any. Well, we had a little bit of glitches here or there, but when you look at the overall record, we're twenty plus in games, and and then we're thirteen and seven, and then the last two weekends in the NFL, dog pounds five and zero, oh, totals eighteen and nine. You can't do much better than that. I've been really on top of these teams. I feel these teams, and, uh, and, and and that's what it is. I think when you really study, you watch the games, you read what everybody's saying, you listen to their interviews, uh, you look at the statistics, you put it all together. You know, handicapping to me is not a science, more of an art. Yeah, you can look at the stats, but it's not really a numbers game per se because every week human beings change. And uh, but but. It's really a, it's really an art, and I think you really have to be on top and get a feel for what's going on in order to win, and and that's what I've been doing. If you want to get on board for the rest of October, twenty one dollars, you get all my big plays Monday, and you get some baseball plays in there too in the playoffs, which we're doing very well with one eight six six eight four one sixteen fifty five. Uh, Jeff, your best bet, plus tell everybody how they can get aboard. You've got consistency with the NFL and college, including 15-5-1 and one in the last three NF, uh, college Saturdays. Well, my best bet on the show would be the Packers. Last week I won all three games of advertiser on the show. This week I have three more games. You're going to get two more conference games of the month in college football, plus my uh, NFL Road Warrior game of the year. You get all three of those players, just $19. Just call LVSS, 1-866-575-8916, 1-866-575-8916. Uh, all right, my best bet is going to be the underdog Saints. When they win a game, they're terrific coming off a win, too, 15-5 and five against the spread uh, the next week. Uh, Dave Koken, keep in mind, he has his college super total of the year going Saturday. If you like to play totals, it's 99 bucks online, or you can get it for 29 bucks with a high roller release by calling Dave at one 866 896-1629. Alright guys, that'll do it for the NFL version of ProLine. Good luck with the games, everyone, and we'll see you next week.